back in the med lab for a little quick video here. First of all, I just want to um, thank everyone for their support for, you know, for the viewership going up and also for the subscribers going up. Um, whether you agree or disagree, whether you're into the subject or not, I appreciate uh, any time you wasted or didn't waste in watching any of my videos. But if you do like them or have interesting collections you want to share, please comment. Um, I'm a very busy person. I try to read my comments and get back to people gradually, but um, just hang tight. I will usually always get back to you. Um, so without further ado, um, this is not going to be a long video, but uh, I mentioned mainly in a lot of my videos, they mainly focus on the stuff I find in the Penny Pack uh, Creek and the Penny Pack Tributary, the watershed system. And um, that's my main in-depth research subject um, because I found a lot of very interesting things, um, both in the anthropology, the stories around the area, and um, also just in the sheer geology. If you're into geology and you walk a couple of these streams in the um, Cambriad, Cambriotic area of Pennsylvania, this southeast area is the most geologically unique area of, of Pennsylvania, one of the most geologically unique areas on the east coast of the United States whether um, it's the mesomorphic layers that are present um, in the, uh, the rock of the Wissahickon Valley, like Valley Green Park area. And that's where I had a lot of my geology labs in college because there are literally minerals in those exposed rock masses, um, these mesomorphic granite type rock masses that were literally not stable um, in on the Earth's surface, there. So they've concluded, you know, yeah, this is part of the original formation of the plates. Um, and you know, you got the Mississippi Valley Plate, and you've got the Atlantic Plate, um, you got the African Plate, um, and <clears throat> really unique area. And a lot of the Cambriatic um, area is exposed um, in this in this area. Uh, that's why we find a lot of fossilized coral and um, things like that. I had a piece somewhere around here. So yeah, um, that's a hammer stone. I don't know where I put the coral at. Uh, probably in one of these drawers. Yeah, right here. So we find things like this on the hillsides and, and stuff in Montgomery County, uh, Pennsylvania. And we even have a beach, I mean a, a school named Copper Beach. And this is after the you know, a lot of these Cambriatic fossils that we find, and this is a big piece of uh, fossilized brain corals, millions of years old. And you got to realize the high hills in my area I live in the highest, you know, the highest point in Montgomery County, essentially. Uh, these were the, um, the beaches and the parts that weren't covered by the shallow ocean of the Cambriotic period. You had an uh, oxygen rich, um, atmosphere on earth during those times and um, there's all kinds of megafauna and big versions of animals we see today um, that's the time period that if there were giant people around they would have been around then because that's when everything else seemed to be gigantic you know even the fossils of turtles and the titanoboa the largest snake ever to slither around the surface of the earth there were you know armadillos and small uh, barmen or mammals that we, we know of today, um, like, a, like a groundhog or beaver that were just massive in size, like you've had the giant sloths and you had the giant armadillos that were the size of Volkswagen beetles, so if they were that big then and, and people happened to be around even though it's not really supported in mainstream science, so you just don't have the evidence of it, you know, there could have been very, uh, very good reasonable biological reasons for for things to be massive sizes. I just wanted to share that quick thing, but onwards to the true purpose of this video. The true purpose of this video is to focus on part of my collection that has really nothing to do with a penny pack. Um, now these are all finds out of uh, creeks with Indian names in Pennsylvania, but this tray and the artifacts next to them, these all come from the Neshaminy uh, Creek or the Neshaminy area. Um, those two were found, at, I used to work at a vineyard um, in Bucks County that ran right along uh, 
a tributary of the Little Neshaminy, and I found these in the plow field in the actual vineyard when I was working. Um, so you get a lot more detail on those artifacts. You can, you know, that a plow gradually uncovers, you know, uh, although they're not perfect, you can still see a lot of the detail. Now onwards to the other finds. So the reason the penny pack is a lot more unique than some of the other streams, the Wissahickon's very unique geologically, but contains mainly um, Wissahickon schist, um, which I, I did a video on an artifact earlier, and I, I, I told you this little hammer, this pick, it's got these weird little bubbles of iron in it, it's got this weird layering. I thought it was some advanced ceramic, because you know how hard and chimey it is, it feels like it's been cooked or heat treated. Now this is probably, it's definitely heat treated. But, through um, how I could be so blind to this, and you know, forgetting that rare material in the Wissicken Valley, this is found in the Penny Pack, but part of that same, um, that same seam of geology, that same um, vein, uh, exposes some deposits of this really unique material that's only really found in this area along the Wissicken and parts of the Penny Pack called Wissicken Schist. Um, this material was very easy to cut, and it's very strong, it's light, it's structurally you can easily form bricks and blocks, and a lot of the houses around here are made out of this material. Um, it gets confused with mica sometimes because it's got some sparkly, it's got some mica running through it, but it has iron ore in it as well, um, and different properties that are unique to that exposed Cambriatic um, area uh, of geology that runs through the valley. So. Uh, very cool. Um, still an artifact that was shaped into a hammer and treated. It was, you know, probably for metalworking of some sort, primitive metalworking. Um, now, the Nishamini stuff is all really one color and one material. And this is why I focus a lot on material cultures. When you walk in any part of the penny pack, it's just this black, or black mud rock bottom. These big chunks square um, in their crystal makeup, in their cleavage makeup uh, of mineralization. Um, and it's usually black, brown, blackish green. Um, it could be called mudstone, siltstone. Some of it is schist. And um, the large majority of it is something called argillite or argyle. Now, argillite is a super common um, sedimentary stone. Uh, it has a dull or lush, uh, duller look to it until it's, it's worked and shined. It can polish into a shine. Um, it's also referred, it comes in different colors, dark brown, brownish red, black, greenish, blackish gray. Um, it's also known as a soapstone, uh, along with your, your limestone. And um, it's, it's close to that. Uh, limestone's getting a little bit harder. Um, in some contexts. Now, there is a really fine variation of this this type of stone, and it is referred to as black slate, and that's in quotes. So there's a really, really high-grade argillite, a really high-grade black shale um, that is structurally stronger and has a high, uh, a high ability for shining and, and purposing. Now I show you the Nishamni artifacts because they're almost solely made out of this material. They're arrowheads and projectile points, which I only have a couple examples of here. They're usually longer, skinnier in shape, and, and kind of have that design. We find a few like this and a few other argyle type points in this glass case. Um, these are found in the penny pack. So could, could it have been left there from warfare? Could it have been left there from a burial? Um, we know the people that made these types of artifacts, the Algonquin and the Lenape in the tributaries of the Delaware, where Penny Pack is a tributary of the Delaware as well. It flows into the Delaware. So we know they were along the creek first, and they're the ones that named it. The Algonquin and the Proto-Algonquin and the Lenape tribes, the Delaware tribes. It's so when the conquest of the Wyandotte, Susquehannock, I call them the Wyandotte because that's what's on record in this area as far as street names and such. Um, um, it's apparently what they called themselves. But this group I call the Susquehannock, um, the Anastiwi, the Conestoga, the Minzwa, the Minque, the Wyandot, and the Wyansak, the, you know, um, someone called, some people call them the Sumac tribe. Smoked a lot of Sumac, Staghorn Sumac. 
But anyways, this is purely Nishami and, and some really cool artifacts. Um, so this, this tile here, most of this tile came from um, a park or part of the tributary that runs through the park known as Playwiki, which is also a name given um, to the area by natives. Nishamini uh, itself, the, the place name, the meaning of that creek means a creek that runs twice or the, the twin creeks or the creek with a mirror. And why they call it that is if you've ever walked even the little Nishamini and the tributaries of it, the creek doubles back on itself so hard always when it turns that it's like there's two creeks running next to one another. Um, you always feel that way in the Nishamini. Of course, uh, the, other, um, the other artifacts, these longer uh, hide working um, and hide scraping tools and pokers and these two um, sharpeners which are, are of really high quality which I will these have all been recently found Th this piece here and these two pieces I actually found yesterday while on a fishing trip these other two pieces along with this guy here uh, and the projectile points were found in the same place but uh, several years ago um, and we always find these type of tools um, in uh, relation with really rich beaver grounds and fishing grounds. Now, matter of fact, the uh, the area where these tools are found, um, these argyle tools, which another 80% of the artifacts found on the East Coast, including the New England region, they're made out of argillite um, or, or shale, if some, if some people don't want to get technical with, with what they're actually dealing with. And um, it's very common to find artifacts. It's also known as pipestone, which is a huge commodity for the Native Americans. Um, but I want to uh, show you this kind of stuff just to show you the differences in the two cultures, even in how they're making and what materials they're choosing to use. Uh, of course, if you're an inhabitant of the Nishamini um, or a lot of the other creeks um, further up northeast of, of us, you're going to get out of that um Cambriotic shelf area, um, and you're going to get more into the Atlantic plate line, which consists of mes there's there's mesomorphic rock too, a harder variation of this black stone known as basalt. And basalt, some of these could be basalt. I have to examine them a little more closely. Um, these ones that highly polished though, that is all argillite um, and schist. I mean, and um, uh, shales, different shales. Now. The nice thing about pipestone and shales and argillites is they're they're softer in nature and they can be worked with, but they have a pretty good durability, impact durability. They can be shined. They can come to a luster. Um, we don't find many artifacts that have a drill hole in them through stone. It was a very hard thing to do. Um, this is usually accomplished uh, with another rock or a drill bit that is stone or wood, and then. Um, crushed up uh, sands and, uh, you know, quartz sand, you know, crushed up little finely powderized quartz and stuff, and they used this as an abrasive, and it took a long time to get through these. Um, this one even has this drag mark, this elongated mark. They could have gotten a rope through a smaller hole and, and used um, used the, uh, you know, the coarseness of the, the grounded uh, silicates, the sands, to, uh, to further uh, enlarge the hole. Um, this would take a long time, and it's highly polished. I'm thinking this is more ceremonial, uh, earring, necklace, something like that, more so than a fishing weight or a plume or a net harness for, for a fishing net, although it was found in a very, very predominant fishing area. Um, this artifact came sitting there right as I came down the bluff, and how do you not pick it up? looks like, a to me, on my perspective, walking out, looked like a giant ice cream cone. Uh, when I first found it, but then after cleaning it up, it's obviously a pick or an axe of some kind. You could still uh, see the scarring, the mineral scarring from whatever uh, leather or rope they used to um, fasten this down. Um, that was its halfway point. It's obviously got an eye here and, and the back crest of a bird. It looks like a goose. Um, just extremely well made. Um, and you can still see that shine from when it was polished and you know beaten in, into shape. Um, this rock is, is a very flat color um, until it's polished, similar to like an unpolished uh, projectile point like this. You know, the, another broken point, and that was my fault. But, uh, you know, when you shine this up, it becomes something much more, more crazy. 
um, in appearance or if the tool is being used a lot in a friction based um, capacity it's going to get shine naturally and it's the whole point of this uh, little video was to show you hey there are many different stone tools used for different things there are pokers um, this literally is not only a poking tool but if you look carefully it comes down into a sharp edge so it could have been flipped around and used as a knife or you've got the poking end um, it could have been used as an enlargener or a gouge of some sort through hide remember we find uh, a lot of these tools around the beaver areas and you always usually find a stone marker with three lines through it. This is a Native American thing or, or four or five lines with a V through it on a rock nearby. And, and this is denoting this is our fishing ground. There's, you know, we've, we've caught X amount of beaver. Or we've done this amount of trade or this is our tally mark symbol. You know, uh, a lot of people argue that the natives have no written 